National Education Policy 2020, which came in about two years ago, has been fully being implemented by different universities, colleges in the whole country. There are several features of this policy which have been empowering for our students, for our faculty members, for our institutions in terms of increasing their employability, in terms of enhancing the entrepreneurial capability of our students, in terms of research and innovation, in terms of national development and in terms of helping them to become good citizens. Some of the very important features which include multidisciplinary education, whereby students will be able to connect the dots. Maybe someone is studying engineering, but how it is related with society, how it is related with philosophy, how it is related with the national development or the economics of the country. All of this will be known to the students if they are in a position to take courses from domains other than their own. And that's why enough opportunities in the form of choice-based credit system, as well as in terms of choosing electives beyond their domain have been permitted and institutions have been requested asked to become multidisciplinary, engaging in probably if they do not have their own facilities in those domains, have MOUs, collaborations and have enough number of courses to be provided to the students. The beauty of the multidisciplinary education is in the today's world, you look at any product or process, it does not belong to one single discipline. These are all having multiple disciplines. Uh, even a small uh, mobile phone requires not just electronics or computing power, but also requires how the UV interface is there. And that's why how it will be handy, how it will be communicating. All of this requires different aspects of technology and as well as humanities and social sciences and that's why students will have to be given projects which are multidisciplinary in nature and forming a group of uh, people from different backgrounds including their guides and supervisors from different backgrounds brings in rich what we call multidisciplinary nature into the projects which the students perform. The second one is in terms of multiple entry and exit we are permitting students to leave in between with the credits earned being deposited in their academic bank of credits. Some of the students would like to return and they can make use of these credits not only in the same institution, possibly if they migrate to some other state or some other institution, they may be in a position to make use of them because it is in their personal account which is called as academic bank of credit of an individual student. And that's why when a student goes out, instead of going empty handed, may be provided if at the end of one year of the program certificate, at the end of two years a diploma, at the end of three years a degree, and at the end of four years maybe an honors degree or a specialized degree. All of these features have been embedded in the education system for the very first time in the world. Next important part of the education itself is teachers and that's why teacher education is also given great emphasis in terms of how do we change the present model of two year B.A. program to an integrated four year B.A. program where they will also have the subject specific knowledge, domain knowledge as well as pedagogical aspects of the knowledge and such teachers will certainly be very very holistic in their approach when they start teaching in their schools and high schools. And that program is also being rolled out from this current year. We have innovation, the importance of innovation. All the nations of the world who have prospered economically have done some sort of innovation or the other. Look at some of the countries who have prospered by leaps and bounds. This is all because they promoted innovation in all its formats. And that's why innovation has been given great emphasis in the policy. Indian knowledge systems or Bharatiya Gyana Parampara about which the policy has laid emphasis makes our students proud of our rich heritage, be it in different types of applied arts, crafts, handicrafts, design, music, dance, drama, but also in science and technology. Look at physics, look at chemistry, look at mathematics. 
Some of the early research in these domains, including astronomy, was done here in India and then it migrated to the West and certainly has been further developed. But its origins lie in India, in Bharat, and our students should become aware of it and not only be proud of it, but how can they make use of that knowledge in a contemporary era in terms of what we call synthesis of the ancient and the modern and creating new technologies, new applications which are useful to mankind. Our country, our ancient heritage has been respecting environment all the time. Our all festivals, the way we deal with our entire neighborhood has been embedded with all the 17 sustainable development goals. And that's why when we connect the past with the present and take them into the future, they are not only going to be employable, they are not going to be only merely ready for further future actions that they are going to take in life for making this planet a better place to live in, but also in terms of uh, how we will have to live together in this world peacefully. And that is where Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is one family. Sarve Janaha Sukhino Bhavantu. Let us all celebrate, let us all be happy together. This philosophy of Bharat is now being adopted and accepted by the world over and that's why our policy is going to be creating such citizens who will be all be not only aware but they will be practicing all of this in their day to day life. Also research is very important. For research, National Research Foundation which is going to be established will take care of research not only in science and technology but also in humanities and social sciences in all domains of knowledge. And that will support further not only knowledge generation, knowledge assimilation, knowledge dissemination and finally knowledge application. And that's how our industry will get benefited. Our students who will all be going through such a wonderful and beautiful education system which has a lot of values embedded in it. Our students will all be trained in the ethics, morals and the honesty and integrity will be part of all of this and such people when they become entrepreneurs, when they create their own startups, it is not only creation of wealth but also it will be creating happiness in the whole world and in our own country certainly yes. And that is why the new national education policy which has been rolled out, rolled out has all these features in bountiful way. It is only up to the universities and colleges to adopt it fully and also make that useful to themselves and their neighborhood. Last but not the least, I am speaking to an IGNO, which is an open university, open and distance learning was one of the past ones. But today, with the use of digital technologies, with the use of internet, with the use of MOOC, massive online open courses, today the education can be made available at the doorsteps and there is huge emphasis given on digital education as well as online education in the national education policy. Also creation of a digital university which is very very important because our students cannot afford to come to cities from rural areas and tribal areas, pay heavy fee, also take care of their own living expenses in terms of hostel accommodation as well as mess expenses. And if we are in a position to provide this high quality education for our children from rural and tribal areas right at their doorsteps through very affordable high quality education, it would be not only increasing the gross enrollment ratio which is one of the ideals which we have been talking about in the national education policy but it will also give quality education at the doorsteps, affordable education at the doorsteps An education from the best of the teachers in the country will be coming to them rather than they going to them. And this is a new modern era of use of technology. I am sure IGNO with its background of open and distance learning will graduate to make all the courses in the online mode. Thereby we will be able to reach out to more and more students and empower them including those who are physically challenged, including those who are dyslexic, they will all be possibly be taken care of and the true spirit of Antyodaya, the last man, will be taken care of through this national education policy.
थैंक यू वेरी मच नमस्कार